everyone, Argzy here. Welcome along to a new series of videos where we're going to take a look at course play and auto drive in a whole lot more detail and break it down into uh, small, easy to understand bite sized chunks to help out new and potentially experienced players with using course play and auto drive. Now, I know for a lot of my audience, a lot of my viewers, this might be a little bit of uh, sucking eggs for the first few, but I'm hoping by the time we've got through a few videos, and I do have a list that we're going to try and cover off, uh, once we've got it through a few videos that you might have learned something about both course play and auto drive. Now, a few things to note at the time of recording this video, course play is currently version 8.0.04. Uh, it is still a developer version. There has been uh, some regular releases and updates released over the last couple of weeks since it first came out with some bug fixes and things like that all to do with issues reported by you the users so uh, keep on doing that as you're using it um, and also remember always to download it either from Courseplay's github uh, there's a link down in the description or once it's been tested and released by giants you'll find it on the giants mod hub as well so uh, regardless there's only those two places you should even download course play from so please do make sure you do that so without further ado i do have my best uh, teacher's outfit on at least i thought it was and uh, we've gone for the orange checked there but it does look like i'm here for a little bit of instruction so we're starting off this is just going to be a first look at basic courses in course play um, setting up here on this field we've got this field set up here behind us spin around um, and we're going to get in there and set up the cultivator with the challenger on behind and just have a look at how to start off with course play in its most basic forms before uh, the next couple of videos might look at in a little bit more detail. So hope you find this useful. Hope you find it informative. If you do, make sure you drop a thumbs up and leave a like on the video. But let's dive into it and have a look. So sitting here in the tractor, we can bring up our course play dialog box by pressing delete on our keyboard. We've got that there and delete will open and close it. We can drag it around and put it wherever we want on our screen. We're going to leave it sitting there because that is the easiest way to spot it. You can see there the version is clear 8.0.04. We can click on the button there and that will bring up some help menu and talk to you about sort of generated basics, which is kind of what we're going to go through at the moment. Um, there's a few more detailed things that we'll dive into at a later video, but for all intent purposes, we're going to keep this all very simple. Um, we've got our tractor up there, so you can see we're in the challenge room T635. Uh, we can press on the field work there. We've got that set up as well. Um, First things first though, there is no course because we haven't created one. So to be able to go in and create a course, we need to do that and click on the link. Um, other things to look at here, obviously I work with of our implement. Now if we just uh, press our little mouse button so we can scroll around, you actually see if we press this and change the size of it, it actually puts a box around the implement to see exactly where it was. And you can see the uh, red line there is for the center of the tractor, so that will change as and when you're using a different piece of equipment, but uh, you can actually see a visual reference if you're wanting to see what the width of your tractor or your implement is. Uh, but it will also automatically detect that working width of four meters. If you want to reset it like that, just click back on work width there. And um, what is the offset horizontal? And you can see that there it will offset the equipment left or right. So your course will be set up based on that. Again, we want to keep that as neutral as possible for the experiment. So. I'm going to start off by actually driving into the field and the reason for that is we click here on the no course we'll actually see that the uh, field hasn't been detected yet so we would actually have to specify the field position here on the left but we're not going to bother with that this time because I'm wanting to keep this as simple as possible to explain to you what we're going to do. Now where you start off in the field is actually a critical decision too depending on the shape of the field this one's quite a regular field so we're not going to have any issues but Depending on how many headlands you've set up, it might actually change the start position to adjust where the overlap and change from each lane is. So just bear that in mind. We're going to start off here, click on no course, and you'll immediately see that field 25 has already been identified. So we already have a field that we can use that's seen there with the white line around the outside. So we don't actually have to do anything here with either our target position or our field position. Obviously our start at waypoint, uh, first, last, or near because we're starting out our work here we're always going to be wanting to be at the first waypoint so tabbing across we're going to have a look here across the top the maps all sorted let's have a look at our field work settings so very basically our working width is four meters that's already defined we only have one tool here the one cultivator the one tractor so that is going to stay here at one we will look in a future video at how to set up multiple tools 
number of headlands uh, this is all personal preference now I like to have three or four headlands depends on what activity you're doing how wide the piece of equipment is if you were using a sprayer for example with a 40 meter boom you'd probably only want to do one headland around the field um, or you'd never actually be able to do it now we're not going to focus too much on some of these other settings but just very quickly um, a narrow field would be if we were only working on a skinny field with a long run that would just take the headlands off each end rather than around the outside um, and we can also specify where we want to start work on so we're going to start work on centre because we're working a field that we're cultivating so we want to go and do the middle then run around the headlands last um, a couple of other quick little settings we're going to look at here um, do we want sharpened headland corners we want to have that activated and what this means is will the corners be rounded by the tractor just driving around it or will the tractor go into the corner lift the implement back into it and make a nice tidy neat uh, corner we're going to turn this down to number of round corners to zero. Uh, if we left that at one, the first headland pass around the outside would have a rounded corner. Um, corner radius doesn't matter, headland direction doesn't matter for what we're doing. Um, a little bit of overlap is always a good thing to have. We don't need any field margin. Uh, we could increase or decrease that to increase or decrease the size of the field. So that's all pretty much sorted. Um, that is about all I am going to change. Uh, there's a whole lot of options here for how to work the field. I'm going to go through those again in another video on how each of those options work. Um, but I think for the sake of this one um, and just being able to set up a very simple course, we're going to leave that settings there. And we're going to come back here and tell this to generate a fieldwork course. So if we jump back in here, we can see our course is our four headland passes one two three four there on the end and then each row is going up and down now for whatever reason it's done it at a slight angle that seems a little bit counterintuitive to me I would have thought it would have been parallel to one of the edges but it's not actually parallel to any of them not sure if that was a setting we had direction of rows was set it to automatic so I should have done that automatically ah, it's figured out the best and most efficient way to do it so we're just going to leave that setting there now before we press start on the screen here, um, we'll just have a very quick look at what we can do. We can press the I button and that will actually cycle through all the different waypoints so you can see quite clearly where the start point is. If you have it just on the first one, the next 20 or so waypoints and then click it again and it will show you the entire course. Now this is very helpful if you stop uh, worker halfway through and you want to restart them. You can figure out exactly where they got to and make sure you're on the right waypoint for starting them off. But we're just going to come back in here. We'll leave this set to uh, the next couple. Make sure we're set to first waypoint when we're starting. We're just going to press play and let this guy go for it. As you can see there, they've already dropped the implement. They're heading along and following along with our course. So that's pretty smart. You've got an estimated time there of 49 minutes and 31 seconds to get things finished. So you can go away make a cup of coffee, maybe go and harvest a field somewhere else and you know exactly how long it's going to take for this person, this worker to be finished with your job. So we'll just run up here, you can start to see our course for the return waypoints as we get to a waypoint that removes one and adds another and that's building the course back down there so you can see exactly where the track is going to head. So we've got quite a tight turn now again there are some advanced options where you can make those turns a whole lot simpler but uh, for the purpose of this video we are just looking at how to set up a very simple and basic course as easy as you can and the tractor is going to figure out its best way to get turned around and head back in the direction it needs to go for the next pass so it's backed up it's turning around within pretty much the confines of the field it has gone a little bit outside it's going to get lined up again here on the uh, course turning all automatically once it gets to the point that it's ready to go it's going to drop that implement back down carry on back down the rest of the field you can see no overlap or anything like that it's just doing the job and uh, things are counting down and it's working its way to getting things finished so pretty easy pretty simple to go through and set up a course play course to get this done now i am just going to stop this and we will just have a quick look at those settings for the headlands just so you can understand what the difference of those are it's so back over here where we started out before just before we go and have a look at the headlands uh, just another feature here if you want to remove the course you currently have so we've got the temporary course set up you can come in here and press this button and that will get rid of it so we now have no course loaded and the reason I want to do that is I want to create a quick little course where we start work on the headlands rather than on the center of the field
It's all exactly the same settings. Uh, we're just going to come down here and make sure that's set to headlands. Uh, everything else will remain pretty much how we set it up previously. So sharp headlands corners are activated. Number of round corners is zero. Just to demonstrate, we're going to set that to one and we're going to generate our field work course. Clicking down the bottom and you can see this first corner here and the first corner on each headland pass, or the first headland pass, sorry, it is rounded rather than square, where the rest is square. What that would mean is a small portion of the corner of the field would not get cultivated. So we're going to come back through, change our settings to bump that down back down to zero. We're going to regenerate our course. And you can see now that's got those nice square sharp corners. So we head back out into the main menu. First waypoint, I'm just going to press play, turn this on, and you'll be able to see our course as it goes around the edge of the field. Now, just to demonstrate, when we get to the corner, you'll see that the tractor will sort of stop in the corner, we'll lift the cultivator, turn, and then basically back into the corner to make sure it covers the whole field. It's getting close now, it's slowing down, figuring out where it can go to. We'll go to stop just about the width of the cultivator, because it is going to back in and do that section. So. Let that get turned around the corner here. Figure out where it needs to go. We'll back up in here. Very clever to do this with an articulator or a trailed cultivator as well. Uh, you can imagine a three point pitched cultivator would be a lot easier to back into there but uh, course play handles it without any issues which is nice it's uh, very good to see so there we go that is pretty much us all set up with a full headland uh, it's taking everything out of the corners it's not leaving any unworked field so there's nothing to go back and do and that is about all there is to go through and set up a very very simple course play field work course now that would work for a cedar it would work for a sprayer um, anything you can think of that would do field work, your stone picking, uh, fertilizing, manure spreading, slurry spreading, all of those tasks would work based on this course. You could use it for a uh, combine if you wanted to, but there's some better settings we will get into in a future video on how to use uh, combines with course play because uh, there's a few little nuances there which I think will help make that a much more enjoyable experience. But there we go, um, like I said, short little sharp videos covering off some of the basics of course play and we'll get into some more advanced settings as we progress through and learn more about how this all works. So there we go, like I said at the start, um, probably telling a few people how to suck eggs but I do hope that uh, anyone new to course play is going to figure out and learn a little bit how to, how to use it and what they need to be able to do. Uh, look at that, getting a little bit of a different turning system there, the fence confused it so it's actually figured out there was space on the edge of the field to go and turn around. Um, one other thing to point out just while I think about it is that the workers don't leave any tire tracks so you'll see uh, they don't have field damage, they don't damage the crops and they don't do any ground deformation so uh, hopefully that might come with the mod it has previously in FS22 so you might like to see that uh, come out at some stage because it does look much more authentic when you're getting wheel tracks left by your workers so um, anyhow like I said that is a quick look at courses on course play, uh, how to set up a basic course and how to get started with it the first time you use it. So hope you found that useful, hope you found it informative. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.